Hello everyone, this is Dalton coming at you with another unboxing video. Today we are going to be opening the awesome set of the Pathfinder Battle Shattered Star Series. Um, so today it is a Paizo's based day. Um, anyway, I've already got this out here. I've already kind of opened some of this plastic so it's not to annoy you guys with the horrible annoyingness of opening this plastic because it's cool and all, but it can get irritating to listen to that plastic. I mean, I know a lot of the other guys watch you cut and all stuff, but I kind of pre-cut it because it kind of makes it a little bit gentler on my viewers' ears here. Okay. okay. With this brick, okay, first off the pack, we are getting some minis that were not really well put inside the package. Like, they pop around there, but oh well, things happen. Um, so first up, we are going to have a dupe, which if you watch my other videos, it is the Grey Maiden here. Very nice sculpt to her, though. Very nice, very nice. I can't really have anything bad to say about her. Gray Min here. Very nice. Miniature. Her sword did get a little bent from this, but I can easily fix that with a nice little you know, hot water, cold water trick. Nice and easy. Anyway, moving on here. Uh, next up, we got a new mini for this. I've never got her before. But if I recollect this correct, she's the woman on the back of the box here, which get this for reference. So yeah, we got the Another of the box people. This is the Gray Maiden Commander. Number 44 out of 55. Really awesome here. I like she's got no helmet. She's got the special sword. Got a nice bow on the back. She's got her shield on the back. She's like, heck with you people. Carries a shield off her. Gets rid of her uh, helmet there. Very nice sculpt. Very good for a nice NPC or PC. If you want to make the Gray Maidens like a uh, force of good in your town. Maybe they're kind of like the guards. Uh, next up here, we got another new purse. This is a pro. <clears throat> oh man, I don't think I know what it says. A uh, port to porti okay, porti okay, or something like that. Interesting little guy there. I'm not really sure what he is. Got a little hook there. He's like a crazy looking little under dark character. Kind of reminds me of the Darrow from Pat from D and D, but you know. Not really sure what he is. Maybe he'd be a nice little crazy man to have in your town if you want to have a little crazy guy running around like me running around your town. So, something. Uh, now we're going to get to the big guy here. I can't readjust. I mean, the only downside of this set is it looks like they do use the, um, the tying in these big guys, but it makes a lot of that extra noise. I don't like to put my viewers through, but anyway. And then we have us again, maybe you watch my other videos, the Gug, which honestly, I don't mind hating to these guys. They're pretty aggressive looking big boys, big old uh, demonic looking from the back with four arms and your head turns around, nothing creepier than when the head just opens up and these little eyes are just precursors to that terrifying death. I love how his inside of his mouth looks glossy like that, that nice gloss and just the simple like blank eyes. Those eyes that scream like, look into me if you dare. But you will die. <laughs> okay, anyway, I digress. Moving on. I'm just going like, Look into my eyes if you wish to die. Ugh. There you go. A little voice acting for you people. Um, I am a voice actor for the Dice and Dummies. I play Bardis. I am one of the members. And, uh, you know, check us out, guys, if you want to hear more of my uh, voice acting. Where it plays a great mighty barbarian. And I am like a saber tooth barbarian, so I am different. Um, next thing here we got is something. Can I... Tell 100% what it was. Okay. Okay. I'm not really sure we go here. Okay, here we go. It's a hill giant. A little bit small and ugly. A little weird bit portion, but I mean, hill giants are a fat little people. I mean, I kind of wish he was a huge class, but, you know, he's only large. He's only big and large. So maybe be like a young male hill giant with a boulder here. Fat little pudgy. Guy with like that grungy look in the hair looks pretty good. I mean, the eyes aren't too bad on him, the little mouth there. Got a very big boxy jaw on this guy, and a big bunch of fur pelt for his back. Very disgustingly grungy bugger. But yeah, we have the hill giant, so another giant to add to my collection of giants. I always seem to get giants, they, they always seem to find me. No matter what I do, I always get giants, weirdly enough. Um, okay. We're gonna have a, some more dupes in this like this set, cause but not a bad one. This is a dupe I don't mind. This is the Might on Spider. 
I have no issue getting mites. Mites are pretty cool little buggers, and we did get the mite on spider, which I think is the harder to get ones. Nice writing on the spider here. A little mite with a little shield and a mini little dagger shank. Like, mm, nice spider. I Means it's nice to use for a creature riding on a spider if you want to throw it in the game. Okay. Yeah. See so right here. This is oh, okay. Uh, this is a tower girl. I have no clue what a tower girl is, but that apparently is what she is. She looks like a good rogue character, or maybe like a NPC who's trying to escape a, her captors type deal. Maybe she's like an escaped uh, prisoner. Maybe like she was royalty in some land with a nice little headpiece there, or just a work girl warrior who is just not taken seriously. I, I don't know. I have no clue what a tower girl is, but you know, pretty cool little mini here. She's a nice little NPC to PC if necessary. And then we got something here. We get him out. Get him out of the box. We'll take a look at what it says here for. You. Okay, something I don't think D and D has, as far as I know, I haven't seen them yet in D and D. But we got a Clockwork Soldier. This is a nice looking little uh, mechanicalized Mecha Man here. He's a medium class. You could use him as probably a Warforged if you needed a mechanical guy, because I know the mech, the robot people are pretty cool. To be those like automatons, but, you know, Clockwork Soldier really nice if you need a actual Clockwork Soldier. I know they are in D and D since the. Uh, 5e's um cobalt press monster book that they came out with has these kind of guys in it so pretty cool very nice sculpt i mean i love all the detail and intricacy going on there in this like face and stuff very nice like his spear might need a little bit of warping but other than or warp repair but other than that very nice mini that's definitely a steal well, i'm gonna try and get this moved a little bit over there we go yeah, some people don't need to have to sit there like that. Yeah, but really cool. I mean, that's really awesome. I change my camera view a little bit lower. Well, now nah, we're not going to. I'm going to start putting them over here. Because I just realized I'll make it easy by taking off from this end here. Make some room. Sorry about the noise, people. Like I said, I really honestly used to just sometimes get it all unpulled out from the plastic and do it. But, you know, I like to be a little bit more fresh. But... I know other guys like to go straight from the cutting of the plastic, but I try to give you guys a little bit of a saving of your ears because that stuff can get really irritating really quick. Okay. So we're not so bad or bad at pulling so far. We're doing pretty good. We got some cool little stuff here. Uh, looks like we're going to get me... Okay, I'm not really sure. This guy's crazy looking. You know what Little wrap here. Okay, I mean, once again, something I really wasn't hoping to get just because I have a bunch of those type of things already. But yeah, we got to say fire giant. I mean, he is a large class, so maybe he'd be a younger fire giant. He looks really crazy. Maybe he'd be like the uh, crazy fire giant they kick out of the place because he's not as good. Just regular fire giant though, number thirty-two of fifty-five, really nice. I like the like uh, fiery stalagmites and stuff on his back, and the fire marks like lava. Or molten rock sword might have to be rebent a little. Oh, actually, okay, maybe not. Maybe it just had to be pulled. Oh no, yeah, probably have to be heated. But yeah, not bad. Crazy looking, uh, psycho looking guy. Like I said, he's not the worst. He's not the uh, craziest thing I've ever got. Um, next up, we have a hound of Tindalos. So I'm guessing some like uh, a rack, some like a amphibious houndy creature. Very aggressive looking with his kind of like venomous look. You know, a little tongue there, nice little slimy. He has a slimy skin approach, which I think is nice for him. But yeah, cool little uh, evil monster. Maybe someone's pet. Maybe they serve Ender Caps. I feel an Ender Cap might want to have something like that around. Uh, okay, we got our first like dupe of the pulling here, like of the brick wise. We have the another Clockwork Soldier. Show you that. So. Not a problem that I get multiples of those. I mean, because Clockwork Soldiers are sometimes found in groups anyway. Like, you can get pairs of them and stuff. And uh, this is one I already have one of, but not a big deal. It is the Grub Swarm. As you can see, very simplistic grubbies. I really like the nice little thing here. So it just says Grub Swarm of Grub, or like uh, Grub Swarm. You could have this standing for Rock Grub, stuff like that. Which Rock Grubs them are pretty terrifying, stuff like that. So, you know, nice silvery little grubs that just swarm all over you and rip you up and go... And they have to rip you up and eat you. 
Bad boys. Bad rubbies. Bad rubbies. Okay, next box here. So, so far we are down three there. We've gotten two giants and a gug as the big dogs. Then we got the some new characters. We got the nice Grey Maiden commander, which is cool. So, I guess the Grey Maidens must be like a faction of female soldier, which is pretty cool. So, maybe if you go to a town where the females happen to be more aggressive than men. You know, and the men don't mind having the women take control of the guard. Okay, I don't know what we got here. Something big. Something good looking, I think. Um, let's go with the small guys, because the big guy there is uh, all wrapped up. So, he's less, he's more effort. So, another dupe, but not from the box. It is another mite. This is the second time I've drawn a mite, which, like I said, I don't mind getting dupes of mites since they're tiny little guys. And they can stand in for goblins, since they're like little tiny minis. They're little boys. They can stand in for a goblin if you have to. Let's put all the... He was back there. Or up here. Oh, I'll try to get this guy. And we also have another dupe, which is the Pathfinder's version of the Hellhound. I like their fiery version, but at the same time, I just like the D and D's one better with that black and like the red underbelly stuff. That just they look so much more aggressively real. And then we have something here. It's like a skeletal champion. A really nice looking, uh, almost sort of Egyptianish looking. Skeleton Warrior, which actually I really like his sculpt. I must say, his sculpt looks really nice and intimidating. Got this nice little headdress piece here. Got this like, little bit of armor. He's not like any flashing clothes, but you know, he's aggressive looking with not a bad looking sword for a supposed champion. So, really good mini there. He's a good undead. He could be like leading some undead. So, there's nothing wrong with that. And I can get this guy out because he's for some reason wrapped and he's popped in like that, which is why I kind of want to go last thing because he's got. More effort here to get out. Okay, okay. Really awesome. Yeah, I think this is actually a harder to come by one to pull. This is the Earth Elemental. And it is a large class. Um, he's number 52 out of 55. I actually think a lot of people don't get him, I think, with the pulls of this stuff. But really awesome. I love his gem effect here. These nice shiny greens. Like, it has a nice shiny translucent effect. I mean, you're not translucent, but nice reflective property you get with the emeralds. Popping out there and stuff like that. Really nice. I wish they just put one here and then one in his chest to help kind of give the color sting going because one elbow, not the other. I mean, aesthetically, still pleasing the eye, but still would have been nice. I mean, or put, like, some green in the eyes there. Help give him those reflective eyes would have made him a little bit better. But honestly, great-looking elemental. I mean, I don't have – I can never get enough elementals. I mean, I'm going to have to definitely start saying we need to start using these in our game. So if you guys want to keep watching the Dice and Dummies – I'm going to talk to our DM, and we are definitely probably going to use some of these bad boys in there. I mean, I've got the minis for him. He better as well use them. Give me one second here, folks. There we are. Yes, Nancy, well, I just did pause the video just so I could get rid of that plastic because the plastic was blocking stuff and getting really irritating for me. So, sorry if all y'all had, like, a really good thing for that. Um, I think it was this one I actually was going to go with next, and I just got it pushed back because when I was moving the plastic out. Knocked around. I want to go with like kind of my order there. I was taking my head in order when I was pulling them out during the little cutaway there. And I wanted to do this one next just because I felt like it. Okay, so can't tell what's in there, but it looks like something new. Something I haven't opened. Okay, well, it is going to be a dupe opening for that. And every single guy inside this one, this is a dupe box. So every one of these guys I already have. We have a dupe in the in this thing's wise by getting another hellhound. Another of these little hellhounds here. Not bad. I mean, if I can put a big old pack of hellhounds together, not a problem exactly. I guess refocus there in the group. Um, we have the what I think are the um, troglodytes of this uh, of Pathfinder, which I think are these white um, speckled guys, which I'm pretty much going to use them as troglodytes. These Zulgoth, since they don't really seem to have anything in the book of D and D, so there's nothing to close up other than troglodytes. So I'm going to say these are like probably a maybe more elite troglodyte. Maybe the white speckled is a sign of, like, you know, uh, good work there. I mean, there's not much to say about them. If you watch my other videos, I've already got that before. Um, this one's another repeat, too. It is the Cleric of Zan Kuthin. So, like I said, this box is all ones I already have. There, I'm going to zoom in. Really creepy looking. Honestly, he looks a little bit creepier than my other one. But that's because they have a little bit of a heavier brow in there on his face this time for Sculpt, which is a little different. Definitely like a dark cleric, so maybe if you have a bad guy group and or you want him to be that style of cleric where it's like, trust me, I'm a cleric. It's like, but you look like a killer. Don't worry about it, guy. I'm worrying about it. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, 
you know, go for something a little different there in your group. And the last up we have for the big guy, the Wrath Demon. This really big bird, man, who honestly will basically be a good Vrock if you need Vrocks. I like him versus the Vrock Mini from D&D, though, because he's not out of peg. I hate pegs. But he's nice. He looks pretty cool. He's red and black versus the rock, Vrocks, like bluish look in the other one. So, you know, nice uh, dark look here. Really cool. Not my not problematic to get a secondary of him. Still usable. Still very easily usable. Um, get to the next boxes here. Got th we're on our last three, guys. Last three. So far, I haven't got anything, like, super wowing other than the Earth Elemental. I mean, getting a second Gug isn't super bad, but, you know, I mean, fighting one... Since Gugs actually do have a D&D &D thing, um, if you are in the Cobalt Press, they do have the Gug in there. They look a little different since they're a huge class creature. Awesome. Okay. I just got the one thing I was really hoping to get from this series because I really wanted one of these guys, and they look so badass. We have the greatness of the Wyvern. This is the just Wyvern. Now, obviously, with this being a DVD &D, the Wyvern, now, obviously, if you want to use it for the game, you could take, like, uh, the Wyvern stats, move it around. But it does have a fork tail. So maybe if you wanted to, like, call this a Wyvern and you're like, oh, he doesn't really look like a Wyvern. I mean, maybe you can call him, like, a Whiptail Wyvern or something. The variant like that. I mean, really awesome. I love this thing's detail. I mean, if you want to say, oh, he's just a Drake, then it's like, you know, use him as a cool... Wyvern S looking I love that he's actually stuck to his base like that. It gives him more personality. He's aggressive thing with his claws coming at you to rip you up. His wings get in that folded position like he's just flying in. Like, you know, he's going slowly in for the kill, like me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I can't help myself. I get a little bit distracted with those things. But yeah, I love his like eyes like that. Nice aggressive little mouth there. Really sweet. I am actually glad I got this guy. I saw he was in the set. And I was so hoping that I would get him if I bought this brick. So hoping. So he makes it right there worth it because I love dragons and wyverns. Really awesome. Um, the next three things in here, one of them is a repeat, which we got us another rot grub swarm. Oh, this one rot grub is not a bad thing. I mean, for animal swarms, not a bad deal. Let me get this other one out of here. Uh, next up, we have the night hag. So... Obviously not the Night Hag from D&D &D where it's very demonic looking, but, you know, maybe, you know, you could use her as a crazy witch. You could call her a Night Hag. Maybe she's more of like the human version of Night Hags. I think Night Hags in D&D &D are actually demons. So, you know, maybe it's like a Night Hag that was created on Earth. So she's not as demonic looking like so that way she could blend more with humans if necessary. But, you know, eventually the evil corrupts her too much that she just can't look human anymore. Maybe that's the disguise. Because I know hags have the great ability of disguising themselves. Those filthy, filthy creatures. Next up, we actually have a really cool thing here with a very goofy little face on him. A medium air elemental. Now, as you can see, not a bad sculpt. I mean, for making it humanoid-ish with the thing here and the big hands. The face is a little bit weird. He's got that goofy face. Like, so he's mean, but, you know, it's kind of goofy. So you're like, eh, you want to laugh at him more than hit him. But, you know, he's got the nice little swirl pattern of air there. He could pass for maybe a water elemental if he needed it to. Or maybe even an ice elemental. I know that's a thing. Pretty cool, though. Really nice. I mean, I like elementals. They're always pretty cool. Nothing wrong with that. So that's a pretty good box there. That one's pretty awesome. This one feels pretty heavy that I'm opening now. Heavier than the Giants and stuff. So I'm hoping it's not a Giant. I mean, if it is, let it be something really cool then for a Giant. I mean, I know hoping for a huge is impossible with this, but... Or something awesomely great would be nice. Okay, um... I think we're looking at a dupe here. Uh, yep, we are looking at a dupe. I mean, not a bad dupe because he's a usable creature. I mean, I didn't have anything similar looking to him before Trolls because I only had, like, Kingsmaker's Troll Leader before him. And then I had, like, a Reaper Troll, which was a Cave Troll. And then I had some, uh, like, I had a Rock Troll from Reaper. But, yeah, we got the uh, Troll Champion again. Not a bad looking mini. I mean, like I said, he's not bad looking. A little more on the muscular side of trolls. You know, nothing wrong with that big old uh, smashing mull hammer there. There's like crazy tongue, which looks all slimy, which is nice. And his knife is going to need some bending work, but nothing super bad. Warty skin. I mean, now I'm going to actually say I can actually have, I got some trolls now. Like, so if anyone goes, oh, I bet you don't have any trolls to throw at the group, yeah, you'd be surprised. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, we're going to get to the little people, or the mediums. I keep saying little people. Um, we have us another dupe in this thing. It's the Tower Girl. 
like I said, nice sculpt. Maybe I'll paint her different since the other tower girl's like that. She's like, maybe looks like a ninja girl, if you think about it. Almost a ninja little girl, which, you know, would be an interesting ideal. Um, next up, we have Natalia Van Keskergen. Van Keskergen? Really weird name. Maybe she'd be like a nice swashbuckler. I mean, obviously, she's like a pirate and themed, which is a little different. I thought she'd be into like pirate, the Skull and Shackles series, but yeah. Not bad looking. Nice uh, sculpt. Could be a PC. Hold a sim. I don't know if that'd be a scimitar or long sword, short sword. Not really 100% certain, but really cool. She's nice. And then we got, oh, okay, this is one I know people have complained a lot about when they get it. It's the uh, the Ravenous Ooze. Now, I know a lot of people say, oh, I could make something that looks like this. But you know what? I mean, it's like a slimy, simple ooze. It looks a little bit more to me like a, the Tracker Ooze, but... You know, what to use it for. It could be an ooze. Maybe it's like a corporeal spirit that's like a gloop spirit. I don't know, something maybe like those slimy demonic creatures or something like that. But, you know, I mean, an ooze is like a, you know, just a slime. There's not another interesting mini. So that's not too bad. I mean, he's not my favorite sculpturally, but he's not the worst thing I've ever seen either. I've seen some pretty bad sculpts in the days. But, you know, he might be pretty bad, but. You know, he's not the worst. Like I said, he's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Okay, get this box here. Another one of the heavier ones that feels like it's really tightly packed. Um, definitely something I haven't opened before in there, so that's a positive. We're not getting another dupe. Okay. We're not getting a dupe. That's good, but we're going to get some things that, like, kind of are. Um, so, first off, we're going to go with the little guys. We've got me the Shadow Hound here. Not bad to get them. I've only got two of them, so getting a third one, I can make a pack of these things, like a pack of wild dogs style. Um, like I said, really nice. I like the Shadow Hound. It looks a little bit better than the Shadow Mastiff that D&D has for their Shadow Mastiff. The Shadow Mastiff looks a little weird looking to me, but that's pretty cool. Let's see. This one I thought was Terrain, but it's not, even though I'm not sure what it is. It's a karyo karyotid Column. Yeah, it's this weird Column woman. But I don't know if she's like, she could make Terrain. She's got a base, so that's cool. Really interesting sculptural there. Little nice looking stone stature girl with her nice little headpiece. She looks like she's actually probably strong. You could put something on top of her. Yeah, okay. Kind of works. She couldn't be a good column. She could be terrain slash uh, mini. Put her right there. Um, next up, I'm going to go with the Pallid Path Cultist. Okay, this guy is a weird-looking little duck. As you see, he is really translucent-ish. Like very, they were trying to make him like a very translucent-looking mini or skin. It works because when you look at him, he kind of looks pretty see-through there. Got those creepy little glowing eyes there. Little dagger, naked guy. So I'm not sure if he's like an invisible character. Or he's supposed to be invisible. And as you can see, like the way he gets that slight darker where my finger goes behind him, then. You know, weird. Interesting, though, Mini. Interesting, Mini. There will be uses for this crazy, weird guy. Maybe I'll make him, like, the invisible guy that steals and shanks you. But then we're going to get to the big guy here, though. Final Mini of this box, or this brick here. Final one. He's going to be really cool here. If I can get him out. And I did only get this brick for $85 from Miniature Market, so I have to give credit. That is a bigger deal versus what you usually buy him at. $100 from Lending Games for a Pathfinder, and then, like, you know, more everywhere else if you're trying to find them. Plus, you got to hope the place sells enough older class because this would be an older class. Now we got a really great one. This is a definitely good one because these are actually very uncommon for people to pull, or I think these are actually the rares. These are the large fire elemental. And as you can see, very nice fire effect. He's even got some, like, uh, molten-ish rock coming up here, some rock clusters. Really cool as his texture. he got the face. He has him making a fireball. He's actually really solid, which is great. Now let's do a quick comparison of him and the Earth Elemental since they're the same size. So you can see these two bad boys coming in. He come with a rock fist, him come with a fireball. I mean, nice stone. I like his stones on him because they add a different texture. You usually see the fire elementals of just being pure fire and these little rock breakouts here, which I'm thinking would be like uh, something like a soot ball or soot formations on him, something like that. Really cool. I do like this guy a lot. He has a lot of personality, a lot of character. Really like him. So anyway, guys, that's all the group right here. Let me just get a little, let's do a little bit of a close-up. There we go. I'll just have the camera pan around. 
So that's the Gug over the fire. There's a couple giants. The awesome Wyvern, definitely one of the gems here. My elementals that are gems. Nothing wrong getting another troll. Wrath Demon's an okay thing. We've got some new guys here. Some regular creatures I already have, but you know, nothing wrong getting duped with some of them. Kind of those creepy clerics, maybe that might not be a bad thing. Got some more mites, some clock regardings. I really do like getting this commander girl here. I don't know if she's rare, but if she is, awesome. I got another rare, but I'll check on that. Really cool. I got a bunch of guys here. Really awesome. You know, and I got these awesome elementals. Nothing wrong with that. They always can go with my elemental packs. And that's everyone, guys. So like I said, guys, if you want to follow more videos like this, then click the subscribe button down there and leave a like. And also ring that bell if you want to be alerted to any time I post another video. Um, this is number two of my Miniature Market two-part series, as these are the minis I got from the Miniature Market order. Um, and anyway, guys, let me give a quick shout-out to Paizo, really awesome looking. And also shout-out to my podcast with the Dice and Dummies, as I am a member. I play the great and mighty Bordus, if you've already watched it. You want to get a hold of me on Twitter to get more personal in with me. I am at 01 Berserker, and that way you can get a hold of me as a member of the Dice and Dummies. Or if you want to just say, like, hey, man, I love your YouTube channels, or if you got any criticisms, or if you want to leave any comments at the bottom. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. But stay tuned, and like I said, please leave a like at the bottom there. And if you want to subscribe, please do. I can always use more subscribers. And, uh, you know, ring that bell. Anyway, guys, that's all we got. Bye bye